Recently, Wendy's restaurants in the U.S. announced that they will be experimenting with surge pricing. What is surge pricing other than a ripoff? Well, maybe this free podcast can help. I'm Larry Fedorik, and this is Later That Same Life. Each week on my podcast, a different topic, discussion, or story from our lives. Season 12, Chapter 5. Surge Pricing. The rideshare service app Uber is most often associated with surge pricing. About eight years ago in the U.S., they were granted a patent for their surge pricing model. The patent was more for their system that gets us to agree on the price of a ride to a certain destination on a certain day at a certain time. It's not a trademark of surge pricing that belongs to Uber. As a matter of fact, surge pricing can be traced back to the beginnings of humanity and certainly to the Industrial Revolution well over 200 years ago. It is gone by many names, demand pricing, time-based pricing, price discrimination, and most recently, dynamic pricing. And not dynamic in a good way, like a spirited, energetic, and full of new ideas. Oh, no, no. Dynamic as in a state of constant change. Dynamic pricing is really a nicer term than surge pricing. The word dynamic helps cloak the greed, whereas surge, well, water, people, the enemy, when there's a surge, it's never good. So I guess that Uber and Wendy and others aren't even going to try and hide behind the euphemism here. Let's just call it what it is, surge pricing. Is it wrong? Is it bad? I think so, but it's not illegal. Like I said, dynamic or surge pricing has been around like forever. Excuse me, good sir. How much for a quart of your fine goat's milk? Well, what do you got? Well, I've got a chicken. That's no good. That guy over there will give me a chicken and a duck. All right, a chicken and a duck it is then. Next day, kind sir, another quart of your fine goat's milk. Here is another chicken and another duck. Sorry, pal, it's now a duck and two chickens. Hey, what can I say? Business is business. Soon after that, we had merchants and shops and shopkeepers. The dynamic system remained. A shopkeeper charged a price based on inventory, demand, market value, etc. You know what you did back then? You haggled. If you were alive anywhere in the Middle Ages up to the 18th century, you had to know how to haggle. Excuse me, aren't you Ignatius, the famous haggler? Well, yes, I am. What is it you want? Teach me all you know, Hagelmeister. By the mid-1700s, the Industrial Revolution was well on its way. This meant more stores, more merchants. Store owners who discovered that the time-based demand or dynamic pricing was no longer workable. It took about a hundred years, but you know what was invented circa 1870? The price tag. The price tag is the opposite of surge pricing. They say that price tags were invented by the Quakers who brought a unique sense of fairness to their lives and their businesses, creating a system where everyone could pay the same price for an item, regardless of wealth or status, was more egalitarian. But I'm Ignatius the Haggler. Sorry, pal, I only work here. Now you're going to buy something or not? The price tag was great. We've relied on it for centuries. Oh, look at that. That's nice. How much? Check the price tag. Oh, no. I'm not paying that for that. Even services began using price tags uh, of a sort. Guaranteed prices. You both signed a contract, which is really just a larger, more complicated legal price tag. But now, today is no longer today. Today is the future. We're consistently moving away from the bricks and the mortar stores with price tags. 
everything happens in the ether. That's where everything is fluid, especially price. The only constant is change. One of the reasons Wendy's Restaurants is thinking about experimenting with surge pricing in the summer is that they need the time to install new state-of-the-art electronic menus where prices can be changed flawlessly with a few keystrokes and a tap. You know who the modern-day grandfather of that is, don't you? Gas stations. As a matter of fact, gasoline is the king of dynamic pricing. What is the price of gas? Well, is it a weekend, a Tuesday, a holiday, summer? Is there a war somewhere, a tornado, an election? I'll tell you, the day I saw the first electronic pricing sign go up on the corner of the gas station lot, I thought, well, now they can just change the price without even going outside. I always wondered, over the years, how much we overpaid for gas because the attendant didn't feel like going outside and going up the ladder. You know, just to bring it down two cents. Hey, come on, it's raining. On a side note, by the way, I know that in the long chain of fossil fuel billionaires, the gas station guy makes the least amount of money. Low profit margin. But still, that big sign on the corner of the Shell station can change in a whim with minimal effort. Gas prices are a very complicated system, but you know, long weekends and summer when people travel the most, that's usually when gas is most expensive. That's gotta be surge pricing. You know who else is engaged in surge pricing for decades, even before we even called it that? Airlines. The price for air travel, also very complicated, and dependent on many, many factors. Airlines also have subcarriers and agents whose responsibility is filling the aircraft. That means if you want to fly to Jamaica for March break, you might get a deal if you book it in November, but not if you try and book it uh, March 1st. The price will be higher. And while we are bowing to the ancient royalty of surge pricing, Let's not forget game day parking. Yeah, we're just going to park in that $20 lot across from the stadium. We'll be there in time for the anthem. 50 bucks? I ain't paying no 50 bucks. So you start driving in concentric circles around the stadium looking for cheaper parking. And the circles get bigger and bigger and bigger until you're about a half a block from home. So you just park in your driveway and take transit in to catch the last quarter. Surge pricing. Let me introduce yet another method. You've heard of this, I'm sure. Premium pricing. Most common right now are the streaming services, who started out touting commercial-free content. Anyone could have told them 10 years ago that this model was unsustainable. Sure enough, they finally caught on. Most now have commercials unless you pay extra for the premium service, which is commercial free. Restaurants and restaurant apps have premium pricing, allowing you to get a a table without a reservation or a special table near the window or, I don't know, discount appetizer, a discount app on the app, first class ticket on airlines, that's premium pricing. Still basically the same flight, but a few extras. So what is anything worth? What should be the price of a gallon of gas, a cheeseburger, a ride home? Market dictates. The answer is it's worth what someone is willing to pay for it. That enables surge pricing. Really, it's nothing more than supply and demand, isn't it? Which is also known as commerce. Capitalism, the economy, one person's spending is another person's income. Well, yes and no. Surge pricing is not inflation, which we are also trying to survive right now. Inflation is basically when it costs more to get this product into your hands, I have to charge you more in order to survive. How does inflation even start? 
Is there a patient zero, the first person or company, whatever, that raises their price and begins this domino effect? I don't know. Are there forensic accountants and economists that can trace inflation down to one thing or person? We've studied the current inflation, and we've concluded that it's all due to Bob. Hey, Bob. What's up? What were you thinking? You know what it is, and I'm not an economist, but it has to be fuel. Once the cost of fuel goes up, can the price of a bottle of ketchup be far behind? The tomato farmer has to pay more for gas for his tractor. The sauce factory pays more for fuel, as does the guy in his delivery truck. Very little of what we need comes from where we live. We have to bring it in by trains and boats and planes and trucks. If you control fuel prices, you could control inflation, right? But you can't. Inflation is really things cost more because they cost more. Surge pricing is when things cost more because I just feel like charging you more. It's extortion. You've been mugged. Surge pricing has to be the biggest scam since the cover charge. Cover charge. I want to come into your establishment and spend money, and you're going to charge me a fee just to do that? So far, I've given you a lot of different pricing terms. Here's one more. Keystone pricing. Keystone pricing, it's been around a long time, is the term for a strategy where a retail price is twice the amount the retailer paid for it. Does that sound terrible? A retailer doubles the cost of an item. Well, the system's worked for a long time. Still does. The retailer also has to pay to get the product into his store. They have to pay staff. They pay a rent or mortgage on a retail space. They need to buy shelves and cash registers. They have to make a living and perhaps also satisfy a board of directors and uh, shareholders. If they can do all that at twice the price of wholesale, well, okay. Uber's surge pricing has been as high as six times the normal price. When does that surge pricing become gouging? Uber has said that surge pricing began to help urge drivers to work later and work during special occasions like New Year's Eve, I guess. But six times seems excessively high. You know, we as consumers, we expect suppliers of goods and services to charge less, not more. We respond to words like deal and sale. We like when Halloween candies are much cheaper on November 1st. Boxing Day blowouts after Christmas. Off-season discounts. You want to visit the Bahamas in August. That's what we want. We want to pay less. On the other side of less is surge pricing. Oh, you want this now, do you? Isn't it strange that surge income never became more popular? Surge income. I just made that up. If you need something, well, surge pricing six times the amount. But if they need you to work overtime or a holiday, it's mostly just time and a half, not double, not six. I'm not totally against some form of dynamic pricing. Again, commerce, supply and demand. But doesn't it need to be regulated so as not to allow price gouging? Excessive profits? Why should you be allowed to float a price just about anywhere with no limits? You're not allowed to actually fix prices. That's a law. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Canada Bread, Weston, Loblaws. Also, do you think surge pricing should be banned in certain businesses and industries? All right, Uber, you can have your surge pricing. You know, you took in over $9 billion last year. Your Q2 profit was over $300 million. I'm sorry, that's not enough. Airlines, gasoline, okay, take your surge pricing. Real estate, you know, is like borderline surge pricing. You know who else has this kind of pricing? Art and collectibles. The Gretzky Million Dollar Rookie Card is now $2 million. The Picasso just sold for a new record. So did the Jimi Hendrix guitar. 
Art and collectibles. Surge pricing. I understand that, I guess. Even those examples are more like demand pricing. You know, market dictates. Homes and art and collectibles are also investments. You bought something at a price, hoping it surges. But Wendy's? Where's the beef? You want something better. You're Wendy's kind of people. Food? I don't know about that. I think we should nip that in the bud. Hi, I'd like the Baconator with fries. How much is that? Well, that depends. Are you hungry? Yeah. Well, then it's going to cost more. How about a Coke? Well, are you thirsty? Surge pricing. Where's the beef? Come on, frickin' Wendy's. Come up with a price and stick to it. You're not Giovanni's exclusive high-end steakhouse, you know. You're Wendy's. How about we all just surge over to Burger King? Surge pricing. Hey, neighbor kid, how much to mow my lawn? That depends. If it doesn't need mowing, $10. If it does, 20 It's 40 bucks for a haircut. 50 if you really need one. Oh, and before I wrap up, I want to touch on price discrimination. I mentioned it near the beginning as a form of surge pricing. I mean, it is and it isn't. There are three types of price discrimination. First degree, second degree, and third degree. Just like murder. First degree, the seller tries to get the maximum price for their good or service. I'd like to install a new kitchen in my home. Price is no object. Well, that's not most of us. But if a seller can get a top price, why wouldn't they? Second degree price discrimination offers discount prices if a buyer, say, buys in bulk. Well, that's pretty common, but it favors the rich. I've talked about this before. The poor pay more principle? You know, a bottle of laundry detergent is 20 bucks. The bottle that is twice the size is only 30 bucks. Well, most of us would buy the bigger bottle and ultimately save the 10 bucks. But what if you were on a tight budget? and you only have $20 to spend on laundry detergent. The other 10 is for food. Yeah, but you would save that 10, yeah, maybe in six months. I'll notice the saving, but I need the food now. The poor pay more. Third degree price discrimination is when stores offer discounts to different groups of people. 10% if you're a member of this union. Discount for police and military. It's Seniors Day at the drugstore. Price discrimination. None of this is illegal. And I get it. If it's legal for them to bring down the price, why shouldn't they be allowed to bring up the price? They should. Just not surge. Economists say this price discrimination works better than one price for all. The one price model. If there's only one fixed price on a good or service, people with less money could not afford it. And rich people would hoard it. It would create a great imbalance. It wouldn't be good for anyone. Generally, I think uh, we understand price discrimination. We understand demand pricing. Even time-based pricing. After all, tis the season to be shopping. We even accept inflation. As long as it's reasonable and salaries keep pace. But surge pricing... That's like putting together all of the above on steroids. As I said, overall, our mission is to pay less. There was even a shoe store out there for a while called Pay Less. Discount, wholesale, factory direct, spring sale, value village, dollarama. How can I pay less? How is the concept of surge pricing even in the conversation? You know, the term Uber actually means denoting supreme or outstanding example of something. And now Wendy's wants in? Surge pricing during peak times? It's Uber pricing. It's gouging. There's the beef. 
Yeah, I'd like a hamburger. As you speak. You already made it? We already made it. When? What time is it? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, you made your hamburger at 11 o'clock. So if I want a hamburger made fresh, I gotta come at 11 o'clock? 11 o'clock hamburger will be at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. It's like 10, 11, 12, or vice versa. So I gotta come at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock hamburgers will be made at 9 o'clock. I gotta be here for lunch at 9 o'clock. Look at this way, you beat the new 10 crowds. Later That Same Life is written, voiced, and produced by Larry Fedoric. LarryFedoric37 at gmail.com. Subscribe to Larry's podcast YouTube channel. Get automatic notifications with each new episode.